I am ready. I've been waiting for this day. I've been waiting for the day I go through that mirror just like Alice did in the movie. Okay, I'm ready to go to Wonderland. Take me to Wonderland, you mirror! Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Alice Through the Looking Glass. So Alice Through the Looking Glass is a sequel to the 2010 film Alice in Wonderland. The film is not directed by Tim Burton, it is actually directed by James Bobbin who directed Muppets and Muppets Most Wanted. It is however produced by Tim Burton. The film stars Mia Wasikowska, it's not Johnny Depp listed first, it is Mia Wasikowska because she plays the starring role. Then Johnny Depp, then Helena Bonham Carter and Anne Hathaway, and Alistair Looking Glass is about when Alice goes back into Wonderland, when she has her own problems going in the reality, finding out immediately that the Mad Hatter has not been himself lately because of him being sad about his family. And so Alice has to go back in time to go ahead and save the Mad Hatter's family so that the Mad Hatter can be happy again instead of being depressed and being sad to the point where he gets very sick. So you guys, I'm not going to lie to you, I actually really enjoyed Alice in Wonderland from 2010. I know that is a very, very hated film. Well, some people I know were in the meth level, but for the most part, it's basically a film that's hated on a lot. And in my opinion, I actually like that movie. I like the world of it. I love the score. I just thought it was visually very great to look at. You know, some noticeable visuals, but really overall, I thought it was visually appealing. And I just like the live action world brought to life. I know I could be in the minority with that, and that's okay. I just personally had a lot of fun with the 2010 film. And with Alice Through the Looking Glass, I'm not going to lie, because I liked the 2010 film, I was actually um, looking forward to this movie. I was just hoping to honestly have as much fun with this one as I did with the original. And after seeing Alice Through the Looking Glass, one, do I think it's as fun as the original? Do I think it's necessary? Well, let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna start off with my positives. Now, definitely my positives with Alistair Looking Glass, starting off with Mia Wasikowska, I think she still does a great job as Alice. She is just as great in this film as she was in Alice in Wonderland. She has a lot of personality to the character. Her character is just so likable. Honestly, just as likable as Alice from the animated film. Anne Hathaway, I still thought she did a pretty good job in this film as well. Yes, she does the... Yeah, <laughs> she does do that quite often, but I still liked her, honestly, as the White Queen. I still think she was very enjoyable. Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter, or as I should really call him for the majority of this movie, the Sad Hatter, uh, I still really enjoyed him. His lisp at times can get quite distracting. However, I felt like Johnny Depp still delivered on playing the Mad Hatter. But I have to say, Sasha Baron Cohen impressed the hell out of me as time. Now, personally, I wasn't sure how to feel with him because I'm not a fan of Sasha Baron Cohen. I am not a fan of his comedy style. The guy gets on my nerves a lot. So I really wasn't sure how I was going to feel about him. He was actually probably my biggest worry coming into this film. And he surprised me. Like, Wow, Sasha Baron Cohen was so awesome as time. You could tell that he was having a lot of fun on screen. He wasn't the usual over-the-top Sasha Baron Cohen. He's actually toned down to play this character. And the marketing made it seem like he was going to be the antagonist. Um, that's not really the case. Time is actually a very good person. You know, as much as I really like Alice here, um, I have to be honest, Alice was really more of the antagonist, really. But of course she's doing it to help the Mad Hatter, so she's doing it for 
a good reason, but let's be honest, Alice pretty much is the antagonist in some ways during this film, but Time was a really enjoyable character. Sasha Baron Cohen honestly gives the most enjoyable performance ever since King Julian and the Madagascar movies because that's where I also really like Sasha Baron Cohen. So Time, Sasha Baron Cohen, I have to give credit where credit is due. Awesome job, dude. Seriously. Awesome job. The visuals in this film, just like in the original, it is so visually beautiful. Wow, this film is pure eye candy. Especially during the time traveling scenes. Those time traveling scenes are so out of this world. Those scenes are so cool and they are by far some of my favorite moments in Alice Through the Looking Glass. The score still sounds beautiful just like in the original film. They, they do make the score from the original film sound a little bit more different but still basically the same and it still sounds so beautiful and there's other soundtracks throughout this film that just flows very well. Cinematography for the film is beautiful. Honestly it shouldn't really be a surprise for me to say that but it is a very well shot movie now like I said James Bobbin he directs this film not Tim Burton uh, James Bobbin directs this film even though I know you can't really tell a difference because I'm gonna be honest um, it still felt like a Tim Burton movie even though this movie granted is really not as gloomy as the first Alice in Wonderland it's definitely more lighter compared to the first Alice in Wonderland this being the film that James Bobbin directed, the guy responsible for delivering the two highly entertaining and enjoyable Muppets movies. I have to say, he did a really good job directing Alice Through the Looking Glass. He still carried on the style that Tim Burton carried from the first film, the 2010 film, very well. The Mad Hatter's backstory was very interesting. I thought there was a lot of heart and honestly a lot of depth when it comes to the Mad Hatter. I was very involved in what was happening whenever it focused on his side of the story. I just thought the movie handled the Mad Hatter storyline very well. There's also a beautiful message in this film about time and how you shouldn't waste your time, how time is precious, and you should enjoy every moment of time. That's something I really do appreciate the film for doing. That's honestly very nice. And for the concept of the film being about, well, time I actually thought that was very nice and the last positive with Alistair Looking Glass that I do have personally is the climax I thought the climax was a lot of fun it was very exciting it was very thrilling not gonna really get into how I'm not gonna spoil it but I'm just gonna say that the climax was very exciting and I'm not gonna lie I was actually at the edge of my seat when the climax was happening oh and then yes of course I can't forget to mention Alan Rickman now the negative side to it is that his character as the blue caterpillar is only in this movie for one minute. Yep, Alan Rickman's last movie and he's only in this film for one minute. Which is a bummer. However, for the one minute of screen time Alan Rickman had voicing the caterpillar, he still did a very nice job. And the film does dedicate him in the end credits, which I really appreciate. But now my negatives with Alice Through the Looking Glass is the Red Queen. Helena Bonham Carter as the Red Queen was very, very over the top in this film. And she was actually one of my problems with the first film. I thought she was over the top, but man, compared to the second film, she wasn't anywhere near as over the top compared to Alice Through the Looking Glass. She was just so cringeworthy, and I know that's the script, telling her to act that way, especially with the makeup or the CGI head and all that. I understand that's what the script gives her, but man, it was just so hard to watch when it comes to the Red Queen. And it's even more awkward when the camera does these zoom in shots of her getting mad. Bring me Alice! Whoa, whoa, camera. Back the hell away from her, like goodness gracious. And the backstory of the Red Queen, whenever the movie got to her, I wasn't very invested. I was invested with the Mad Hatter's backstory, but the Red Queen's backstory? 
Yeah, I did not think that was very interesting. In fact, whenever the movie focused on her, honestly, I was rather bored. And it tries to do something where you feel bad for her, but honestly, when you watch the backstory, how she even gets the bump, it happens for such a dumb reason. I did not buy into the Red Queen's backstory, and it does explain why she has a conflict with the White Queen, which is also so stupid. If you've seen the film, you know why I think it's stupid. And it just wasn't necessary. The movie does go all over the place that it's kind of hard to concentrate on one thing in the film sometimes. One moment you're focusing on the Mad Hatter, then you're focusing on the Red Queen and the White Queen. Queen side of the story, then you have Time who's trying to look for Alice, and you have all these things just going on in this film that's hard to really concentrate in this film because there's so many things just happening at once that the film does come off as being a little messy. Also, the movie does have me going really when it comes to certain decisions it makes in terms of like the time traveling plot and just certain things that happen, like how the Mad Hatter wasn't sick anymore. I'm not kidding you guys. All it took for the Mad Hatter to not be sick anymore is just for Alice to say a certain thing. Once Alice says a certain thing to the Mad Hatter, he's all of a sudden better. whoop de doo Also, the next problem I did have with the film is that the setup did honestly feel very rushed in the beginning. Just how it's trying to set up for its main storyline did come off as rushed. It just felt like, come on, we need to hurry up, we need to hurry up. Just so they don't drag it out too much and I do understand that personally you don't want to drag out something so you could get to the point but it's all like I wish the pacing for the film was slowed down a lot more in the beginning I found this very questionable about the film you know as soon as Alice is back in Wonderland everyone all of a sudden just tells her Alice you're late you're late you need to do this sheesh they can't even say oh Alice we miss you or Alice it's so good to see you again like there's nothing of that she's like the only person that can go back in time to save the Mad Hatter when Really? The Ice Queen couldn't have gone back in time? Or the dog uh, couldn't have gone back in time? Not one of those creatures in the movie could have gone back in time to go save the Mad Hatter? That didn't make sense to me. Why is Alice like the only person able to go save the Mad Hatter? Just like in the original Alice in Wonderland, as visually stunning as it was, and the same goes to this film, there are moments where the visuals were honestly very noticeable. Also with this movie, you can never really feel a sense of danger with these characters because it's honestly predictable that everything's gonna be okay. Also, why is the Red Queen in this movie? I honestly didn't see any point in her being in this film and her character really does not do anything in this film until really in the climax, not going to say how, but she does something in the climax that affects the whole time traveling thing. I just didn't really see the purpose. I just felt like she was just in this film just so they can give us a backstory for us to care about her even though I personally didn't and just so she could do her baddie stuff in the climax of the movie. The humor in this film, some parts they did get a nice little laugh out of me but for the most part I thought when the movie attempted at humor, it personally did not work for me. And the final problem I had with Alistair Looking Glass is that this guy, you know, the guy that Alice was supposed to marry in the 2010 film, man, just like in the 2010 film, his acting was not good, his character was cartoony, but somehow I felt like in the sequel, his character was twice as cartoony and twice as cringeworthy. So overall, you guys, Alice Through the Looking Glass, I thought was an okay sequel. I don't think it's as good as the 2010 film. There were beautiful visuals, the score was very great, there's enjoyable performances from Mia, Johnny, and oh, and Sasha Baron Cohen, who definitely surprised me. But yeah, the movie can go all over the place. Red Queen didn't have to really be in this film, but 
Really, the best way I can describe Alice through a looking glass is the, is the same way I describe my Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. Those sequels are unnecessary, but at the same time, they're watchable, they're harmless, they're not sequels I would just rip my hair out for existing. I can handle them existing, it's just that the sequels weren't necessary, and Alice through a looking glass honestly falls under the category of while being cute it was unnecessary so i'm going to give alice through the looking glass two and a half out of four stars so you guys in the comments down below let me know what you think about alice through the looking glass and also what you think about the animated film what you think about the 2010 film directed by tim burden anything you want to share leave it in the comments down below this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!